Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. October has for the last few years been Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And well, this year we don't really sort of have a specific set of activities here at Internet Storm Center uh, that will do for it. I figured it's a good uh, time to put an idea forward that I've been playing with for a while. And that's sort of an InfoSec uh, calendar. The idea behind this is that home users, small businesses who do not have dedicated IT security staff, maybe not even dedicated IT staff, for them it's kind of useful to have sort of a calendar with, hey, you know, uh, the few minutes, maybe the hour that you can spend on security, what should you uh, do with that time today? And uh, this calendar sort of summarizes some of the operational issues that are easily over or looked otherwise because they're somewhat repetitive of course i put together a quick diary with some activities that i think are useful but i'm interested in your feedback also would it be interesting to have something like this available as a calendar file to easily import into some existing calendar software that you uh, may be using some of the activities i included are things like regular reboots uh, but also i suggest that uh, monthly to check on backups and uh, updates to IoT devices and router firmware. So uh, that list is really just based on my experience in particular with uh, home networks. As I mentioned in the post, I do not intend this to work for larger networks. And it's really meant to be sort of activities like this, not uh, calendars in terms of events uh, like conference and such that, uh, of course, may be interesting. There are several calendars like this around. And uh, what better way to target groups concerned with anonymity than offering them backdoored or poisoned anonymization tools? According uh, to Kaspersky, this happened recently with Chinese internet users. China, of course, makes it difficult to download Tor browser and other uh, privacy tools from within China. The official distribution sites are usually blocked. So users concerned about government spying and privacy, uh, they usually sort of have to essentially you know, search for uh, these tools and often download them from unofficial uh, websites and uh, outright malicious websites. Kaspersky noted a wave of these malicious downloads recently and linked them to a popular Chinese language YouTube channel. The channel uh, with 180,000 subscribers posted a video about the Tor browser in January. Now, uh, that video had something like 70,000 views and the link advertised in this video led users to a malicious copy of the Tor browser. And this uh, version appears to basically be just doing what uh, you try to prevent uh, by using the Tor browser. It records your browsing history. It does record anything you're filling into forms. And then sort of as an added bonus, it also installs additional malware and allows for arbitrary code execution. And remember that users that watch this YouTube channel probably don't really have a choice of actually downloading the Tor browser from a legitimate source. And Apple remote device management company Yamf published a blog post with details regarding a recently patched vulnerability in Mac OS. The issue here is the archive tool that comes uh, with uh, Mac OS. And it's an issue that we have talked about before and it relates to the mark of the web or in Mac OS, this would be the extended quarantine attribute that is set if you are downloading a file from the internet. And then, of course, the user is getting a warning when this attribute is set. But the problem always happens, what if you are unpacking an archive? Are files that are part of the archive uh, being marked as being downloaded or not? Now, the intent of the archive tool is to mark them, and that's what usually happens. So any uh, files that you extract from the archive uh, and you try to open them, you'll get the warning that they were downloaded from the internet. But what Yamp found is that this wasn't always true for uh, this macOS archive tool in particular circumstances if it, the particular file had an 
dot app extension and it was not the only extension so dot app dot aar was one extension here where dot aar is the standard extension for the archive tool and then you had uh, two or more files or folders in the root or target directory so uh, this led to some uh, renaming issues as it sort of tried to resolve these uh, duplicate names and uh, that then led to the files being saved without the quarantine extended attribute so overall a relatively straightforward vulnerability to exploit well and this is it for uh, today of course uh, due to the times when i'm in uh, the uh, podcast uh, may be published uh, at a uh, little bit off times compared to normal and uh, talk to you again on monday <laughs>